Thanks very much for joining us to talk through all of this because I imagine that it's been pretty horrific for you being caught up in it all, hasn't it? You were living in LA at the time all this torture was taking place, the murder happened. When did you first realise that you were involved in all of this from the point of view that your name was being brought into it? Um, good morning, uh, good Richard morning. and Charlotte. Um, it was the 21st of September I was contacted by the Metropolitan Police. Um, it was about a missing person. Um, so I was obviously very confused. I didn't know who this missing person was, but they said her name was Sophie Linet. And um, so I said to the police, I mean, how can I help? Because to my knowledge, they were contacting me when they told me it was Sabrina Kadur had been charged with the murder along with Sam, they said at the time. And, you know, it's just a shock. I went to bed on the 20th as happy as ever and then woke up on the 21st, the biggest nightmare ever. Now, you'd gone out with this, this monstrous woman. How long for? How long did you have a relationship with her for? Um, it was two years, Richard. Um, I met her in Notting Hill in 2011 at NatWest Bank. And it was like a normal relationship at the beginning, you know. We, uh -huh. I mean, we were both in love. I mean, I did see, obviously, mood swings that used to give me a bit of a scare, but nothing to the level of what, what I've heard recently over the last six months since this trial so started. You, so you didn't think at any point to yourself before you split up after that, those two years, this woman's a psychopath? You never thought that? Um, I did, I had, I mean, I, I think when it, when, it, when it comes to someone being a psychopath, there was elements that I felt that she had, she would turn very friendly and soft-spoken to someone very angry. I was genuinely shocked with what, what I'd been reading and what I heard at the Old Bailey when I, when I went over, you know. Yeah, so Sabrina Kuda and her husband, they created this world where they believed that you were having an affair with their nanny, Sophie, and that you would what, sent people to spy on them? It was a, a really extraordinary story that they seemed to be thinking was going on. What was the reality of this situation? Well, the reality was I never, ever met Sophie. There was never a text message, not anything through social media. The first thing I did when the police contacted me was set my passport over, all my social media passwords, gave them all my phones, everything that I had, I opened my whole world mm. to the police because I knew it never happened. Um, and I was glad the police did an amazing investigation which was able to show I wasn't even in the country at the suggested dates that I was meant to have been there. Right. But I was being accused of flying in over the house in a helicopter with my friends, which yeah. it's just crazy, you know? I mean, to put it in the vernacular, they were completely insane. I mean, what they were doing... Correct. They were, they, they were torturing this poor girl. They were waterboarding her, they were starving her, they got her completely in their grip. And the excuse they used to commit these horrible, sadistic acts, which eventually killed her, on this young, lovely girl, was that she, as Charlotte says, was having a secret relationship with you, you'd never met her, you'd never heard of her, and that she was spying on them for you. And they persuaded themselves in their own crazy, crazy world that this was true, and therefore they were justified in doing what they were doing to kind of catch her out. Now, you said in, in, in one interview with, with the print media, this is your first television interview, you said that actually you carry this with you. This is a horrible burden for you because, you know, as Charlotte said at the opening of this interview, you've been sucked into a nightmare and it was in your name yeah. that these grotesque and in the end murderous assaults were being committed. Yeah. Whenever, whenever I, I've said to friends and family, like, you know, I had to spend the rest of my life, and as you mentioned, I have said it in the newspaper as well, that there's a certain responsibility you feel when your name was the name why someone got tortured and put through something so horrific that you could never imagine. But obviously people who know me and love me say, listen, you can't blame yourself. This was two psychopaths that went and done something. It could have been so something else that they looked for a reason to do this. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately for me, it was my name that got brought into this. But the hardest thing for me going to bed at night was knowing that that girl was telling the truth every time that she was answering yes. those questions and them interrogations. Well, she never met me. Well, we don't know you or love you, as you're, those close to you do, but can I just tell you, as, as an independent observer, and I speak for everybody in this studio, you have obviously had nothing to reproach yourself for at any level. This was nothing to do with you at all. Thank you. And I know that, you know, Sophie's parents have spoken about them, calling them evil monsters, and you are particularly affected, aren't you, when you see that picture of Sophie, when you see her looking emaciated, looking hurt, looking scared. This is something that has had an effect on you being caught up in all of this, hasn't it? Absolutely. Even before uh, I started this interview, I got a lump in my throat. It's just that picture that's on the screen now. It's, it's very hard to look at. Yes. Do you have, before we finish this, would you like to say anything to, to, to this poor girl's parents? 
they're in my prayers every night. Um, I don't know what I can say, to be honest. It's just what they've gone through is, is so much worse than what I've gone through. And I, they're just in my prayers. And I think about them all the time. That's the truth. And one last question. I, I suspect that in America, um, these two would be going down for life. And if in certain states, they'd be, as they say, getting the needle or the gas. Yes. In this country, we have yeah. a fairly erratic sentencing policy. We're never quite sure what's going to happen. It's possible they'll get 30 years. And that means they might come out after 15. What do you think about that? It, I think it's wrong. I really do. It's, um, I think there's something that has to change. I think it's people who can do something like that. It, it wasn't, even if it was done all in the, in the space of 10 minutes, it's still not right. This was done over time. It wasn't something that was just done thinking really quickly. Like there was planning that went into this, the torture that girl went through. In my opinion, they should never get out. And so I, it, I support Sophie's parents on that. So you would say, as, as the parents are saying, life should mean life. Of course. For, for doing something like that to an innocent girl? Yeah. Absolutely.